this is one of the simpler problems and yet I find that this problem is asked in a lot of coding interviews. Why is that so? Well, you are given an array of integers that have numbers in the range of 0 to n, correct? And you have to find the missing number. The main reason this problem is asked in a lot of places is that because this problem is an entryway towards bit manipulation. Let me show you what do I mean by that. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will look at a brute force solution and see why that is time consuming. Going forward, we will try to find some optimal solutions and then ultimately use the VOR gate to arrive at a very efficient solution. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand and visualize how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we understand this problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array with distinct integers. And the property is that all of these integers lie in the range of 0 to n. We will see what that means. And what do you want to do? You have to return the only integer that is missing from this range. So let us try to understand it even better with our given sample test cases. For a first test case, what do you see? You see that this array has three elements, correct? So the value of n equals to 3. And that means the range should be 0 to the number 3. So you are expecting 0, 1, 2 and 3, right? And you can see that one of the number is missing. So in this particular test case, you can see that, okay, 0 exists, 1 exists, you cannot find a 2. So 2 will be your answer because you can see that 3 also exists. So for your first test case, 2 will be your answer, correct? Now, similarly, let us look at our second test case. You can see that this array has two elements, right? So it means that you're looking at a range of 0 to 2. And that means you will look for element 0 and then 1. And then you have to look for 2 as well, correct? So in our second test case also, 2 will be your answer. Because then only this complete range will be finished, right? Now let us look at our final test case. You can see that this array has a lot of elements, right? In fact, this array has 9 elements, so the value of n equals to 9. And hence, you are expecting elements from 0 all the way up to 9. And if you try to find the missing element, you can see that 0 is there, 1 is there, you have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you cannot find an 8, right? So in your last test case, 8 will be your answer. Because you can see that you can find 9. And this completes your entire range 0 to 9, right? Now, I feel that you may have understood this problem statement even better. So if this was the condition, first feel free to try the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the brute force solution and start to solve this problem. A good developer always tries to come up with a brute force solution first. That is because a brute force solution can guarantee you that, okay, a solution to this problem exists. So let us say I have this sample test case in front of me that has nine elements, right? So you can say that, okay, the value of n equals to nine, right? And now what is the most obvious way that you can think on how to approach this problem? What you can do is you can start from zero and then go all the way up to nine, right? And what you're going to do, you're going to iterate through this array again and again to check each element. You will start with zero and then you traverse the array. You see that, okay, you found a zero. So cool. Perfect. Now you will look at element one. Once again, you start from the beginning, go all the way up to the end and okay, you found a one. Perfect. Similarly, you will do for two and you found a two. Then you will do for three and you will find a three. Similarly, you will keep on finding elements and ultimately you will reach eight. Once you reach eight, you traverse through the entire array and you do not find an eight. Correct. And hence that is the missing number. So you can simply say that for this particular test case, eight will be your answer, right? And yeah, this solution is absolutely correct and it will give you a correct answer every time. But the only problem with this approach is that you are iterating this array again and again, right? You are checking every element and that will take up so much time. Think about it. If this array had a lot more elements and you can say that, okay, the range could be 99 as well, right? Then what will you do? Will you keep on traversing this array again and again? This will take up so much time, right? And hence, what you need to do is you need to start optimizing this solution. And what could be a better way to optimize this solution than mathematics itself? So what do you do about it? So let's say I have this sample test case again with me, right? And once again, to calculate the value of n, 
you just calculate the total number of elements, right? So the value of n equals to 9. According to the problem statement, this array should have all the integers between the range 0 to n, right? That means 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n, correct? And going back to the basics of mathematics, what is the summation of numbers when you are given a range 0 to n? Technically, what do you need to find out? You need to find out sigma n and that turns out to be n multiplied by n plus 1 whole divided by 2, correct? So this will be the total sum if you have all the integers between the range 0 to n. So one approach that can come to your mind is, okay, if this array has nine elements, then what will be the value of sigma nine? That will be 45, correct? So you know that if this array had all the numbers, then the summation of all the digits should be 45. So now what you can do is take this 45 and start subtracting each of these elements one by one. So what you're going to do is you're going to do 45 minus nine. And then whatever is the remainder, subtract 6 from it, then 4, then 2, and then one by one, just reach to the very end. Subtract all the elements. And you will see that you are left with a certain number. And what will be that? That will be the missing number, right? So in this particular test case, when you subtract out all the elements of the array, you will be left with 8, correct? And once again, this is your answer, right? So did you see what did we just do over here? We just did one iteration of the entire array. So no matter how long your range is, you just have to traverse it once. And in that one iteration, you will arrive at your answer. So this is an efficient solution, correct? And technically speaking, you cannot go faster than this. But I have a concern that when this kind of a question comes up in an interview, your interviewer will ask you, okay, can you approach this problem in some other way as well? And that's an indication that your interviewer is looking for a bit manipulation technique. Basically, your interviewer wants you to use the VOR logic. So let us see what is it all about. In this video, I will just cover the very basic concept of what a VOR logic actually is. I will create separate videos where I will explain all of the logic gates and how they work. But just to give you an overview, you might be already knowing about the AND and OR logic, right? So what that technically means is that 1 and 1 will be equal to 1, 1 and 0 equals 0. And then similarly, you have different rules for OR logic as well, right? So 1 OR 0 will be 1 and 0 OR 0 is 0, right? So you can form a truth table like that. Similarly, you have one more operator that is called the ZOR operator. And what you do is 1 ZOR 1, that will also give you something. And usually, a ZOR is represented by this particular symbol. So there are some properties that you must understand about this ZOR operator before you go ahead and solve this problem. So let me just give you a brief overview about it. And let us look at the properties of ZOR. So first of all, the basic property of ZOR is that the ZOR logic is commutative. Commutative simply means that A ZOR B will be same as B ZOR A. And you can understand commutative property by means of addition or multiplication. So you know that a plus b will be equal to b plus a, correct? Because addition is commutative. And similarly, a multiplied by b is same as b multiplied by a. So both addition and multiplication are commutative. You can understand that a divided by b will not be equal to b divided by a. That is because this division operator is not commutative. So what I'm basically trying to say is that if you do A ZOR B ZOR C ZOR D, that will be exactly same as A ZOR B ZOR C ZOR B. That means you can have all these operands in any order, right? And that is one property that you must be aware about. The second important property is that if you do a ZOR with zero, then the result is always the actual number that you started with. So if you do 2 or 0, 3 or 0, 5 or 0, all of them will give you the original number. So 2 or 0 will be 2, 3 or 0 will be 3, 5 or 0 will be 5, right? So this is one important property that will play some part. And the last property that you must know about is ZOR with self. So A or A will always be 0. So any number, if it is ZOR with itself, 
then the resultant output will be zero. Correct? So what I simply mean is that if you do three for three, that will be zero. If you do nine for nine, that will be zero again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take help of these three properties and try to come up with a solution. So let us take up a sample array and you can see that I have five elements, right? That means the value of n equals to five and I am expecting every element between the range 0, 5. In other words, I need all of these elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now to approach this problem, what will I do? First of all, I will for every number in this range 0 to 5. What will this give me? This will give me 0, for 1, for 2, for 3, for 4 and then for 5, right? And now what do you want to do next is you want to war this entire thing with the war of all of the input variables. Just try to observe what is going to happen. I take up my first number two and then war it with three. Then I war it with five. Then I war it with zero and then I war it with one. And now what you want to do is just war both of these things together. What do you see over here? Since we already defined that war is commutative. That means I can shuffle all of these numbers anywhere, right? I can put this zero over here. I can put this two over here and I can just change the its ordering. So what will happen? It will become two or two, five or five, six or six and so on, right? Whatever the integers are. And once they become together, what happens? Two gets war with two, three gets war with three, five gets war with five, one will get war with one and zero gets war with zero. And you know that if we war a number with itself, what do we get? We get a zero. So all of these numbers, two or two, three or three, five or five, they will all become zero, right? And what are we left with? You can see that we are just left with four. All of the other numbers, they get warred together and become a zero. So in the end, we just get four or zero. And from the last property that we know, any number that we war with zero, will give you the original number itself. So in the last result, we are going to get four. And you can see that indeed four is the missing number, right? And this is your answer. So you can see that this technique will work every time because if you word all the input integers and then you word them with the range zero to n, this range has that extra integer, correct? And all the other integers will just get word with themselves and turn out to be zero. So in the end, you will be left out with the actual missing number, right? Now, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how this works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function missing number, right? And by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with a dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we initialize a variable that is going to store the var of all of the integers, right? So here is my variable. And now what do we want to do? First of all, we want to var all the numbers in the range 0 to n. So what will this for loop do? This for loop will take up each integer one by one starting from 0 and go all the way up to the nth limit. So if the length of array is 9, it will start at 0 and go all the way up to 9. And it is going to var each number with the previous result. And in computer science, this is the operator for var. That is how you var two elements. So now in this all var variable, you have the var of range. And now what do you want to do? You want to var all the numbers given in the input array. And once again, you will start a for loop and then you are going to var each number in the input array with the already existing var. So this will zero out all of the matching elements and you will be left with the only missing number. And thus, what you're going to do is you're going to return that number as your answer, right? The time complexity of this solution is order of n. That is because you iterate through the array only once. And the space complexity of this solution is order of one. That is because you do not take any extra space to arrive at your answer. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As for final thoughts, I just want to say that I know that this problem is very simple and probably you do not even need to use the ZOR logic gate to arrive at an efficient solution. But the importance of this problem is that whenever you are trying to come to an interview, 
then the interviewer will try to gauge how many different ways you can arrive at a solution. And then he can assess, okay, do you even know about bit manipulation? Because bit manipulation is a concept in itself. And sometimes bit manipulation can help you to arrive at some solutions in an extremely fast way. Because it literally works on zeros and ones. And that is how your computer architecture also works. Correct? So while going through this problem, did you face any problems? Have you found any other problems that work on bit manipulation techniques? Sure, I'm going to create more videos where I specifically focus on bit manipulation problems and all of these logic gates in general. But until then, tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. I also have a website studyalgorithms.com to help you out. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya!